Hi, I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through exercise one for Fusion 360. Here you could take a look, and we have this actual model we're going to build today. This is the photorealistic rendering segment of the software, but we won't get to that to the very end of the, the model. But let's see how we can build this model. And as you can see, some of the things that we're going to look at is how to create it as a thin walled part, put chamfers on, fillets, a hole, and two extrusions, and then show it. So let's begin. Inside Fusion, go ahead and select this little icon up in the upper left for new design. Now your settings might look a little different than mine. Some of the things I have turned on down at the bottom here, you'll see display settings. On object visibility, I pretty much turn everything on, but you could leave it however you like. Uh, as far as camera, I'm working with perspective, which actually gives a vanishing point more realistic appearance. If you prefer orthographic, that's fine. The effects, again, I have a lot of the options turned on and the environment I have set to photo booth. But if you'd like to have like a dark background, select dark sky or some of the others, try the environments that you, uh, and tinker with whatever you'd like. All right, let's begin. First of all, go ahead and click on create sketch and you'll see these planes highlight. Let's go ahead and select this one on the back side. Click. And now in the upper left here, find two point rectangle or hit R on your keyboard and center it at the, at the crosshairs. And when you get the blue square, click and drag to the upper right. Now you can see we're metric and I like the metric system, but I'm teaching here in the US. So my students understand inches most of the time more often than metric. So if that's the case, there's a couple things you could do. Let's go ahead and type in for this height five, but then type in I N for inches and it will convert for us. Now hit the tab key and the tab key cycles to the next dimension. And this needs to be three inches wide. So type in three and now you could type in I N, but here I'll show you another little trick. If you hold shift, uh, put the quotes in that will know to convert to inches too. All right, so now what we're going to do, you could go ahead and just click anywhere and you'll see that it updates them to their metric equivalents. So if you want, those are the metric equivalents. You can put those in. <clears throat> also, if you hit F6 on your keyboard, it will zoom to fit. All right, now if we really wanted to work in inches from here on out, you could go over here to the left to the, the model, the browser and you'll see there's all sorts of neat options. In the document settings, you'll see units and set to metric. This little button here on the right side of it lets you select whatever units you want. So in this case, we're gonna go with inches and hit okay. And you can see it converted them all automatically. So it's very forgiving in that it allows you to flip back and forth between the two. Now let's go ahead and we're going to extrude this. So go to the solid tab, go to extrude, select in that border and you'll see there's an actual little arrow you could drag and you can use a ruler the ruler is right behind the arrow and we want to get it to 0 0.5 or you could type in 0 0.5 there or or over here go ahead and hit okay so we have our first solid now over here we have the the rotation box in the upper corner of it there's a home go ahead and click on that that goes to an isometric and automatically zooms to fit Let's go ahead and we're going to now sketch on this surface. So you could start off with those planes and you'll see those front, top and right planes there. You could actually, those are your paper that you could start sketching on. But once you have a solid model with flat surfaces, you could sketch on those surfaces. So that's what we're doing here. So go ahead and right mouse button click on that flat surface, right click. If I just, if you ever hear me just say click, I'm usually referring to the left mouse button because that's what we use most of the time. But if we are using the right mouse button. I'll be sure to say it twice, usually just so you don't make an error. All right, so we right click on the surface and you'll find create sketch. Go ahead and select it from the pull down there. Go to the corner rectangle again. Now we could draw this with lines, by the way, the line tool is right there, but uh, this is just a quicker way. So go ahead and get to that corner in the lower left. When you get the blue box, click and drag this up. Now we actually want this to be 1.5 for the height, but then we want the width to lock into the right edge. So you can type 1.5 and then hit tab 
And now you'll notice it's locked in vertically, it's 1.5, but now click when you get that blue X on the right edge and that locks in to the edge rather than having to type in three inches. It's because we want it to be the exact same width of the block behind it. So there's a couple strategies there for you. Now let's move over here and we're gonna go to solid again. Go to extrude. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to add dimensions before I go there, now I'll show you in a minute. Uh, go to extrude. Select that box down there and you can drag it out until it gets to 0.5 or you can type in 0.5. Either way, it's fine. Now notice there's the operation. There's join or cut or intersect or new body. So if you're making an assembly, you could select new body, but we actually want these two joined together. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to do a cut. Now there is a hole tool that's up here, which is fantastic, but we'll get to that another day. Today, we're just showing the basics. So we're going to draw a circle and we're going to cut it. So right mouse button click, right click on the surface, go to create sketch and hit the F6 key on your keyboard. That's to fit. So you can see the whole thing and go over here to the circle tool and then select circle. Now hover and I have my snaps on and on the right hand side here, you could actually see where you could turn snaps on and off. I like to have the snaps on. They're really convenient. So I'm going to go ahead and get to this quadrant here. You'll see there's, this is a half inch and this is a full inch. And same with this is a half inch and then this is a full inch. So we're one inch off each corner. Select there and drag on a circle and type in point seven five and hit enter. Now we want to locate that. We're going to locate it using the dimension tool. I was going to show this to you earlier, but now is a good time. Go to dimension and select this point here to this edge and then drag it to the left here. And many of you may not have had drafting class before and how to make a drawing. What you want to do is a drawing is basically an interpretation that's it's like a language. And the best way to spell things out is to actually center dimensions so they're not overlapping. Like you don't want it right on that edge. You want it right about there. Click and type in one and hit enter. Now you can see it dimensions up to, I believe, eight decimal places, which is very high precision. We'll do the same from this point to this point. Click here, make sure it's one inch. Now we could go ahead and go to solid. And let's go to the home up here in the upper right corner, just so we can see what's going on. Go to extrude and click on the surface. Now you could drag it forward and that will add volume to your model, or you could drag it backwards and it will know to cut it. The AI automatically determined there was a solid behind it and set it to cut for the operation. So with that being said, let's another option rather than a distance is all in this case, to make sure it always goes through in the event that the design changes and the thickness of this bracket changes. We don't have to change this to update. It always ensures that it will cut, cut through. So go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to go to the fillet tool. Go ahead and select fillet and go ahead and select the edge that you want to add a fillet to. So just like if you were going to take a file to that edge, you tap it and you have a little arrow and you could drag it in and get it to one inch or you could type in an explicit value if you want of one inch. Now you could also add additional fillets so we could select this edge too, and just make sure that that's in this case, it's going to be one inch again. But if you want it to be different, you could type in a different value for that particular one. Go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see we have our fillets or rounds as some people call them or radiuses. Let's experiment with another one. Go to modify here and you can see there's a lot of options that you don't see up on the screen by default, but let's go to chamfer. Now chamfer applies an angle. So you could set over here an equal distance or two distances or distance to angle. So if you want it to be like 60 degrees by 0.125, you could do that, but we're going to make it equal distance. And since this is a 90 degree angle that we're going to be affecting, it should turn out to be 45 degrees by default. So over here, go ahead and type in, 0.125 you'll see it propagates to the other side and we could again use the little plus symbol and add a second one over here and we could change that one if we wanted or make it the same and there we have our chamfers now to rotate this model using your mouse button first of all 
experiment. Push down that wheel. See the wheel? Push it down like it's a button. Don't scroll it. Scrolling zooms in and out. But if you push it down like it's a wheel, it pans left, right, up, and down as you move your mouse. Now if you hold shift and then push the button, hold it down, it will rotate dynamically. So that's what we want to do. We want to rotate this so we could see this backside face with the three flat edges. Let's now go to shell and select this face, this face, and this face, all to remove. And down here we could type in 0 0.06 and hit enter. And you could see it actually shelled out our model for us. So very quickly we were able to come up with a model now let's say you wanted to make a change. Let's say maybe this fillet here, you want that to be something different. You could actually locate that fillet over here on this little editor. And you could right click on that fillet one and edit the feature. And it brings you back here. So if you wanted to change that one up at the top to 1.25, we could do that. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to hit cancel there. But notice that that's a way to edit it. You also have the ability to edit things using just the press pull, which is the Q button on your keyboard. Now, if you click on this, you could click on any surface and make an adjustment to it and make it bigger or smaller or whatever. But we're not gonna modify that. Just go ahead and leave that alone. Okay, so we've seen some of the editing tools and we've seen how to model. A very basic model. Now what we want to take a look at, as I showed you earlier, was the photorealistic rendering, which is really pretty amazing in the software. So over here we have design. Actually, before we go there, let's first experiment a little bit here and what you could do without going to the photo editor. Now, at any point you could right click like off of the part and uh, or actually, I'm sorry, it didn't pop up, but just hit A on your keyboard. And A brings up the appearance editor. Now, if you want a gallery of your own things, you could go to Fusion Appearances here, and actually um, you'll get libraries. And you might have to download them, because by default it doesn't download them. You, you can click on them. But when you do get to something, like I have Brass here, and let's say I want Matt Brass, I could hit this little, this is the download button, and that will put it in my library locally here so I can use it. Now, once you have some picked out, like for example, go and uh, find aluminum. So go to metal and then click on aluminum and you'll see there's anodized, there's rough, and then there's polished. And with the polished, you could go ahead and you could download that and then actually you could bring it up here to add it to your design if that's your plan. And you could go with colors and all sorts of fun things. So like we have this um, blue anodized glossy we could click and drag that up there as well. I like that one. Maybe we want a red and then go back to metals here. And let's scroll down and we could get to, there's all sorts of neat things here. You can even add paints and colors. So when you find something like, a, like here's brass, there's a polished brass, you can drag that up there too and customize your library. Now what you have the ability to do is you could actually, um, Add them to your favorites as well and you can see i have some favorites here that i added but now that we have a few here let's go ahead and let's say you want to add a color to this hole select that surface now over here you'll see bodies and components but change it to faces and let's say we want to add that um, red anodized to it go ahead and just drop it on the surface and you'll see it actually adds that to that geometry now, if you want, you could actually select these surfaces holding the shift key for multiple faces. So let's say the chamfers we want to have selected. You could release shift once you select those. And let's say I want the anodized blue and I could drag those to these surfaces. And notice the collection highlights and then those are all blue. And finally, change it to the entire body up here and go with the polished aluminum and drag it onto the main body. Now here, if you want to remove those colors you just added, you would hit the remove button, but we want to keep them in this case. So hit keep. And so we've added some really uh, brilliant colors here. And now what we could do is we could go to the design button and go to render. Now the render 
option here, you have the ability to set up like the, uh, the scene settings and so on, but go with in canvas. Now in canvas then goes ahead and it renders it on the screen for you. And you'll see on the lower right here, that you have how many seconds it's taking. And if you want to wait that long to go to excellent, there's final and then there's infinite. So you could play around. Now, the more cores you have in your CPU, the faster this is gonna go because it uses those cores and to, to the fullest. In fact, it actually might even be slowing down my video. So you might see my video of my face slow down because it's utilizing everything. I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause there, but you could see you could add some really neat effects and over here under display, you could add uh, anti-aliasing, anti-ambient uh, inclusion, object shadows, and then object visibility. Uh, that, that's actually not, uh, we're not looking for that, but just make sure perspective is on. Now you do have other setup options here. You have scene settings. And if you go to scene settings here, this is where you have some fantastic settings. For example, the uh, how you want, like maybe you want the reflections off the ground to show. So when I click on that, you can see the preview and it will reflect off the ground. I'm gonna pause though, it takes up a lot of resources. Now you could adjust roughness. You could have the background as an environment or a solid color, and you could set it perspective here as well as uh, depth of field and focal points and exposures. Let's go to the environmental library. Let's say I want this dry lake bed, just drag it out here, and all of a sudden you'll start seeing these effects of the reflections off of your model. And it picks up the characteristics of its surrounding. surrounding. So there's lots of different options there for you to play with and have fun with. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause it there. Go ahead and tinker with some of those different settings. Feel free, it's, it's a lot of fun. And then when you're ready, uh, for those of you who are in my class, if you want to make a copy of this, remember you could just hit Windows Shift S and then drag a fence to surround the geometry mm -hmm. and it will save it in your pictures area under the clipboard. And you could actually just drop that image into D12, the learning library. Well, that completes exercise one. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck to you. And I hope they have an exercise two up soon. Thank you for watching.